Thank you. Everyone can turn it on. Ambition is the path to success. Persistence is the vehicle you arrive in. Today is not just another day. It's a new opportunity, a new chance, and a new beginning. It is the first day of your postgraduate life. A very good morning and a warm welcome to SJIM's inauguration program of PGDM Batch 2023-25. I, Saranya Ravi from second year PGDM, will be the MC for this inaugural program. On this day, I take immense pleasure in welcoming our chief guest, Mr. Sanjay Kaul, Chairman and Managing Director of All Operations in India for the Timken Company. Our Director, Rev. Dr. Manoj D'Souza, SJ. Our Dean, Dr. A. R. Rajagopalan. Faculty, the non-teaching staff, my fellow batchmates and dear juniors. A new beginning is a time to reflect on your past as well as to foresee what the future holds for you. Today is about you and the next two years of your postgraduate life in this prestigious institution. Prayer is a surge of heart. It is a simple look towards heaven. It is a cry of recognition and of love, embracing both trial and joy. Inspired by the same, let us begin the event with a prayer song, along with lighting the lamp, requesting our chief guest, Mr. Sanjay Kaul, our director, Reverend Dr. Manoj D'Souza SD, our dean, Dr. A. R. Rajagopalan, our faculty coordinator, Ms. Bini Cherian, and our very own general secretary, Mr. Anto Maria Lewis, to kindly light the lamp. With his heart open wide from the depths, from the heights, I will bring a sacrifice. With these hands lifted high, hear my song, hear my cry, I will bring a sacrifice. Have a pain, a sacrifice. I'll lay me down, I'm not my own. I belong to you alone. Lay me down, lay me down. Oh, hands on my heart, this much is true. There's no life apart from you. Lay me down, lay me down. Whoa, lay me down, lay me down. Letting go of my pride, giving up. Oh my rise, take this light and let it shine. Take this light and let it shine. I lay me down, I'm not my own. I belong to you alone. Take me down. Lay me down, oh, hands on my heart, this much is true, there's no life apart from you, lay me down, lay me down, oh, lay me down, lay me down. be my joy to say your will your way it will be my joy to say your will 
make your way, you will be my joy to say. Your will, your way, always. I lay me down, I'm not my own. I belong to you alone. Lay me down, lay me down. Whoa. Hands on my heart, this much is true. There's no life apart from you. Lay me down, lay me down. Lay me down, lay me down. Lay me down. Thank you, Choir Team, for presenting the prayer song. Thank you dignitaries for starting the event on an auspicious note. Our director, Reverend Dr. Manoj Desoza SJ, resembles the Jesuit idols of love, service, faith and justice. He is a constant source of support of love for each student at SJIM. I would now request our director, Reverend Dr. Manoj Desoza SJ to kindly welcome the gathering. morning chief guest of the day mr sanjay kaul reverend fathers faculty and staff members parents guests and first pgdm students it is with great pleasure that i extend a warm welcome to each and every one of you on this momentous occasion the inauguration of the pgdm 2023 batch this marks the beginning of the 28th batch of our esteemed PGDM program. It is worth mentioning that only a handful of business schools in India have achieved a remarkable milestone of surpassing 25 years. And we take immense pride in the fact that SJIM is one among them. In a significant development this year, we have been granted an additional section by AICTE. Consequently, we are delighted to welcome 240 students to our institution for the first time. And this truly fills us with a sense of pride and accomplishment. Now I warmly welcome the chief guest, Mr. Sanjay Kaul, for this function. He is the chairman and managing director of Timken India, a leading manufacturer of bearings and mechanical power transmission products. With extensive experience in the manufacturing industry, Mr. Cowell has established himself as a respected leader in the field. Under his leadership, Timken India has witnessed remarkable growth and success, solidifying its position as a key player in the market. Mr. Cowell's strategic vision, the business acumen, have been instrumental in driving the company's expansion and diversification initiatives. As we gather here today, it is crucial to reflect on the rich legacy of Jesuit education that we uphold at our institution. For centuries, the Jesuits have been at the forefront of providing holistic and transformative education rooted in values of compassion, justice, and excellence. St. Joseph's Institute of Management stands as a testament to this enduring legacy. Business education in particular holds immense significance in today's ever-changing world. The field of business offers opportunities for innovation, growth, and societal impact. It equips the individuals with the necessary skills and knowledge to navigate the complexities of corporate landscape and contribute meaningfully to society. At SJM, we are committed to nurturing business leaders who not only excel in their respective fields, but also demonstrate a deep sense of social responsibility. I would now like to introduce briefly our new faculty members. Every year, we add new faculty members to our faculty cadre. I would like to start from Father Roshan Pereira. Father Roshan 
was former director of St. Joseph PU College and St. Joseph College in Hassan. He has rich experience both in teaching and administration. He joins us as a faculty member and the finance officer. Professor Vivek Murthy, he was earlier professor, I am Bangalore, and prior to that, a senior economist, Federal Reserve Bank of New York. He joins SJM as a distinguished, distinguished professor. Dr. Ananda Das Gupta, former professor at IIPM Bangalore. He holds international recognition in the field of CSR, corporate governance, strategic HRM, business ethics, and related areas. He has been a visiting faculty at several IIMs in India. Dr. J. Leo is a passionate teacher and researcher. He joins the finance department. Ms. Nazia Memon, a proficient academician and specialized in human resource management and an ardent researcher. She was a resource, research associate at IIM Bangalore. Mr. Rajendra Desai, he has several years of experience in teaching, training, and industry collaboration. He joins as a director of corporate and external relations. Dr. Jessie Nair, she has over 15 years of teaching in reputed B schools in Bangalore and publications in top tier journals. To our new students, I offer some words of advice as you embark on this transformative journey. Firstly, embrace the Jesuit values of being men and women for others. Your education here should not only be focused on personal gains, but rather you should empower you to make positive difference in the lives of others, embody empathy, compassion, and commitment to serving society. Secondly, be open to learning from diverse perspectives. Our institution brings together students from various backgrounds, cultures, and experiences. Embrace this diversity and engage in meaningful dialogue with your peers. It is through this exchange of ideas that true growth and innovation emerge. Thirdly, make the most, you make the most of the opportunities available to you. SGM offers a vibrant and nurturing environment that encourages holistic development, engaging in co-curricular activities, participate in industry interactions, and seize internships and certifications. Embrace every opportunity to enhance your skills and broaden your horizons. Lastly, remember that success is not solely measured by financial achievements, but also by positive impact that you have on the world around you. Strive for excellence, but do so with integrity, humility, and a deep sense of ethics. Uphold ethical business practices and let your actions reflect your commitment to creating a just and sustainable future. As we embark on this new academic year, let us remember the legacy of Jesuit education that we are privileged to part of. Let us embrace transformative power of business education and commit ourselves to becoming ethical leaders who shape a better world. Once again, I extend a warmest welcome to our new students and my heartfelt gratitude to the parents and faculty members present here today. I also take the opportunity uh, resource persons, Father Franz Almeida and uh, Mr. Kenneth Pinto and his team for conducting orientation for you for the next four days. Together, let us embark on a journey of excellence, compassion, and social impact. Thank you and welcome once again to all of you. Thank you, Father, for your wonderful message. May I now request our faculty coordinator, Ms. Benny Cherian, to hand over the bouquet to our chief guest. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Sanjay Kaul is the Chairman and Managing Director of All Operations in India for the Timken Company. Mr. Kaul joined Tata Timken in 1990 as a Production Engineer in the Timken Jamshedpur plant in India. Since then, he has served in a leadership position within the Rail and Supply Chain Organization. His academic excellence include 
master degree in business management from XLRI, graduation in engineering from Pitspilani, and an executive development program for the senior Timken leaders at the University of Virginia, Darden School of Business. Mr. Sanjay is the chairman of the National Manufacturing Committee and an executive council of Karnataka chapter for AMCHAM. He has been named in the top 100 CEOs of India by Business Today for two years in a row. I would now request our chief guest, Mr. Sanjay Kaul, to enlighten us with his words of wisdom. Good morning. First day, energy is low. Good morning. Yeah. So it is important that you, when you are on this great campus, first day you should be really full of energy. So you know, uh, as Father Dr. Manoj said that we should be thankful to Jesuit education. I just kind of wonder that you know my grandfather studied uh, in a school which was started by Church of North India back in Srinagar, a very small town up in North India in the Himal. My father went to the same school, my sister, myself, and my son later to another Jesuit school. So I can tell you personally, you you know, India can only say thank you, Jesuit education. It has really, really built a character for the nation. So thank you very much for that. So that those words just came to my mind. So. Uh, Thanks for the elaborate uh, introduction of mine, but uh, you know, I'm just like you. You know, I feel like a student still uh, learning every day. So uh, rather than giving you a long, long uh, lecture, I will just tell you a couple of stories. And uh, these stories are kind of life lessons, which are important when you start your masters and you get uh, ready for the, for the world, for the business world. A is, before I tell you the story, uh, you know, India today is almost, close to 4 trillion USD economy, 3.7. And very soon will be a $5 trillion economy. And then hopefully a $10 trillion economy. That all means that India is going to grow, grow and grow. 20 years back, there used to be a joke going around that people would apply for green card for India. I think the times are going to come that people will really come to India to work. And you are here getting top education in India, getting ready for this huge, huge growth which is coming our way, uh, you know, as we grow and become the third largest economy and hopefully then second, if not the first. Manufacturing out of that is today, in out of our total GDP manufacturing is 12, 14% is going to become 25. Service industry, IT is $100 billion. Overall service industry, $250 billion. I can give you numbers and numbers and numbers, but the short summary of those numbers is that tomorrow is going to be bright for India. And guys like you, the students who are going to ride that wave or shoulder the respons responsibility will also reap the benefits. So it is very important. When you study for next two years, you will have to put your heart and soul to it. And if you'll just while away your time on MG Road and Brigade Road, it's not going to help you. OK? So you know, please you know, do the best. You are going to get, you know, we just got some introduction of the faculty. They are the best. They will obviously try to train you, but then they can take the horse to the water but the horse has to drink the water. So you got to take this nectar, you have to take this knowledge from your teachers and then get industry ready. Some of you become, will become CEOs tomorrow, some of you will become business leaders, but unfortunately some of you might not become the best despite the same education all of you will get for next two years here. So it is up to you to do what is ought to be done. So I will tell you a story and it is a very small story, couple of stories which will give you a little bit of life lessons. Ancient India in Karnataka, there was a murti car. You understand what is a murti car? What is that? A guy who chisels the stones to make sculpture. So he went out one day with his uh, bag of tools and tackles, and he went uh, looking for a nice little rock. He went into the jungle and he found a nice little rock. So he picked up this rock and he started chiseling it. As he started putting his chisel and the hammer to the rock, the stone shouted back, said, oh, it is so painful, do not chisel me. 
He said, no problem. I won't chisel you. He left the, ro the, uh, this nice little granite stone there and went further into the jungle and found another little rock similar to the earlier one. He started chiseling it. The rock said nothing to it. And very soon, a nice idol got created. He walked on and found that very soon he came to a village and there were a lot of people standing in the village and he asked these villagers, hey, what the heck is going on? Why you are all standing here? The villagers said that we have a nice temple, but we don't have a murti. We don't have the deity. We don't have the idol. He said, no problem. I just chisel a beautiful idol. Come. So they all went and took this nice idol to the temple. It was installed and very soon the villagers started praying and everything. As is important in South India that you also need a rock for smashing the coconuts. So the villagers said, hey, we need a rock on which we'll have to smash these coconuts. He said, the Murtigar or the sculptor was still around. He said, hey, you know what? There is one more stone lying in the jungle. Come with me. So they went to the jungle, picked up this stone which resisted chiseling and took it to the temple. Very soon the devotees would come in, smash the coconut on the rock and go to the main deity and bow their head and uh, go away. As the tradition is uh, that in the afternoon the temple is closed, this rock, coconut wala rock, is telling the deity, you are a granite, I am a granite, guys are smashing coconut on my head and you are enjoying everything. And the deity said that when it was the time to chisel you, you resisted it. And that is the final answer, that you landed as a rock on which the coconuts are getting smashed. So that applies to the students today and tomorrow when you start your new job, that are you willing to get chiseled? The sculptors are sitting here, they will treat you, father is here, the chief sculptor is here, they will all chisel you but some of you might resist it and you will land as becoming the, the rocks on which people will smash their coconuts, but some of you will certainly become the deities, the business leaders of tomorrow. So it is up to you, not up to the chiselers. They are ready to chisel you. It is up to you all how you want to get chiseled. So that is your lesson number one. The second very important story, very important is is that there were two kids playing outside a village. And these two kids, one was five year old, he was a very sickeny, patlu, and the second was 10 year old, hefty like me. They were playing outside this village near a dry well. And this fat boy, unfortunately, fell into the, fell into the well and this, Little kids started shouting, help, help, help. Nobody was around to help. Then he saw there was a rope and a bucket. So the guy threw the rope and the bucket inside and pulled this 10-year-old hefty kid out. They ran into the village and both were shouting, you know, this is all what happened and this young kid saved my life. Everybody said that this is not possible. Absolutely no. How can a five-year-old sickly kid, you know, uh, take this uh, ten-year-old, double his size kid out of this deep well? It is just not possible. There was a wise man in the village. He said that it is very much possible. They said, how? He's, the wise man said that because there was nobody around that kid to tell him that this cannot be done. One of the important things is that as you start your life, as you start working or as you start studying, there will be a lot of people who will tell you, oh, this won't happen. In Bengal, they will always say, Hobena. Any Bengali here? Yeah. So there will be always, hey, Hobena. Can be done. Because I lived in Jharkhand for a long time, so you know, this is. So every, there will be a lot of people who will, when you start a new idea, you want to become an entrepreneur, a lot of people said this was done, it failed. So you have to be very careful of the people you choose to be, you choose to hang around with. There will be people who will always encourage you. It can be done, hobe. But there will be a lot of people who will say, it won't be done. So please choose your friends. Please choose your 
colleagues who will always encourage you because there are a lot of people out in this world who will always tell you before you start even in the industry before when i go to a meeting there will be a lot of people when we say that hey we want to do this they will say sir this won't be done we tried it many years back it just failed if people all these startups who become successful if they think that it would fail they will never start so it is very important as you start your life you have to start with this idea that everything is possible everything is achievable when i left kashmir in 1990 a small place i never thought that i would become a chairman of the company a large company a good american company but i always thought that i can do everything which any other guy from an iit can do i could do anything which a guy from iim would do and i worked hard and i always thought i can do it better than them but then there is no alternative to hard work you need to work hard you know that is unfortunately the truth of the world you need to work hard and hard work will pay we just were discussing this hard work will pay do you want one more story or should i stop one more okay so this is the last story and then if there are any questions i can take it so this last story goes like this in ancient india there was this culture of gurukul so people would go to it was like an a residential school so kids would go to this gurukul and the teachers would be there and they would teach the kids would be all living together they would live together and they would uh, work on the uh, school they will cook they will study they will teach each other they will play with each other so that was the culture of the gurukul and then once a year they would go home so but they, it was a residential school uh, where all the kids would uh, study together so there was this one young kid who was studying there he was good at working in the kitchen he was good at gardening but unfortunately he was not good at studies he tried hard and hard and hard uh, and in the exam he failed and couple of times he tried but he failed and failed and then kids would ridicule him the teacher said that hey we try to teach you but unfortunately you are not having the learning agility so the day came when the kids said that okay i will have to leave this place and go home and do farming or something like that rather than try to study so this kid and this is a true story uh, if we believe this sculpture so this is uh, the true story so this kid leaves the school and starts walking back to his home which was 20 course course is a mile so multiply it by 1.6 so 20 miles away was his home and he started walking towards his uh, home and he stopped on the way near a village he was feeling thirsty so he stopped near the village and went to the well to drink water so while he went to the well he saw the ladies drawing the water out of the well the well chubutra all the top of the well was made of a uh, solid stone and he took the water out of the well and drank and while he was drinking the water he saw on the stone he saw there were deep groove marks on the stone uh, you know tough stone there were deep groove marks he asked these ladies what are these groove marks they said that this is relentless pulling of the soft rope on the rock that the rope the soft rope made the groove or the impression on the rock over years and years and years of drawing it so this guy started thinking that if a soft rope can make an impression on the stone why can't i study and learn so with a kind of a new enthu he went back to the gurukul and told his teachers that i want to put in more hard work and he started studying with a lot of new passion and ultimately this guy graduated and became one of the one of the leading scholars of uh, sanskrit grammar i forget his name very complicated long name but the essence is that a guy who gave us studies went back with new passion and could learn a lot of things because he saw that even a soft rope could make an impression on the stone by relentless working day in and day out so my last four words is that as you get into the industry ethics and integrity father manoj said about it the integrity the joseph uh, the uh, the the way of uh, studying in a jesuit education 
uh, this is very important. Ethics and integrity. That is a differentiator. A lot of people can make money by doing the wrong things, but they will never achieve the success. They will be all caught at the end of the day. Governance is important in today's world. So ethics and integrity, teamwork, working together, excellence and innovation. These are the four words, four golden words. If you put it on a chart and put it on your room and look at it every day, like that rope drawing in and out, you will remember ethics and integrity, very, very important for success. Teamwork, hard work, working together is very, very important. Innovation, to think out of the box is very important. And excellence, you know, we Indians, we fail in our last mile. You know, we do everything, but our last mile is always so hasty that our excellence at times goes down. So very, very important, whatever we do in our life, it has, be, it has to be done with excellence. So with that, I welcome you and wish you all the good luck. You have great times ahead of you because India is going up. It is going to be an important nation in coming times. This education is going to help you a lot. So you are lucky to be born when you are born and wish I was also born 20 years later. You know, now are the exciting times, more exciting times in the world and your hard work and the teachers teaching will certainly help you. With that, I'll say thank you and God bless you. And I'm open to take any questions if there are. Only questions, answers, Father will give. Thank you, sir, for your enriching us with a valuable message. As a small token of gratitude and love, May I now request our director, Reverend Dr. Manoj de Souza, to hand over the memento to our chief guest. Thank you, Father. As the fresh batch is all set to embark a new journey a journey that would be life-changing for most of them. We have three students from first PGDM to share their words about their new journey. I now request Ms. Ria Jos to speak, followed by Mr. Nishant Philip and Ms. Lavanya. A very good morning, director, dean, professors, staff, my seniors, and all my fellow mates. I'm very honored to stand in front of all you brilliant people. I can still see the excitement, nervousness, everything in the sparkling eyes of everyone. So I'm very honored and grateful to stand here in this prestigious institution of business management, St. Joseph Institute of Management. We all know that college is a very new phase of our life. It's not like we, what we've done in our UG, where we had a lot of friends. It's not like what we had done in UG. This is a lack of a more responsible part of our life. I just like to share my experience that I just like to tell you that I did my UG in Bachelors of Chemistry. I know it's very different from what I'm doing, going to do now. But uh, I always had this kind of where we had stand there and do a lot of business meetings. I would have, I, I did it in my home and I would tell mom like, I think this is not my life, my, this is not like my career mom. I think I have to do something different, but I didn't care, okay. I did my bachelor's in chemistry. I was like, okay, I joined Christ for my master's in chemistry. And I was there, I remember the same orientation program I attended there also the same uh, when I did my master's I was very thrilled very honored very uh, but I started my class the same thought came to my mind that this is not what you have to do there is something different Ria that you have to do this is not your career or this is not your path of life but I the same way as like okay this is my thought let's leave it anyway I got into Christ I will continue my master's that's fine but after my first semester, every time I had this thought, after my first semester, I had cleared all my papers. 
second semester i got covid and it was very critical my mom had to come i couldn't pass any of the exams my lab everything was pending i couldn't do anything i dropped out of the course as and i was sad at that time i must say i was really disappointed i was like why did you give me this you know uh, why god everyone has a good life you had to give me this there's only one year was left so that time uh, i got a very good opportunity f- uh, towards like sel to selco foundation it was an ngo it's in jp nagar i worked there for like one year and uh, that was a very turning point in my life and i was so grateful to god to have been chosen there i for uh, from there i had to do some kind of there was a, so many poor children from odisha and uh, jharkhand i was a coordinator in that internship program we helped bring a lot of uh, children there there i had to do i had uh, the opportunity to meet some of the people mba people same like from iim from so i had so many opportunities i talked to them but i didn't have any chances for to write like i didn't have any time to prepare for the exams and i my sister studied my cousin sister graduated from sjim then i heard of the college sjim and i uh, i heard that mat exam was required here i suddenly wrote my exams i didn't like i had no time to do any kind of uh, exam coaching nothing i knew that mat was a criteria only at this february something i uh, like i gave for the last i don't remember i think march exactly i gave and uh, i wrote the exam i got into sjim i was like everything was so sudden in my life very spontaneous thing in my life now i am there standing in front of all of you so i think this was my fate or this was the thing that i had in me and now i am here so the essence of what i said it was like every one of us we all may have this thing in our life that uh, like if you are confused or if you are you know what you have to do in your life some people might have the same goal from birth like i had my friends who have to become doctor who have to become this so they earn for that i was so lazy i didn't do what i wanted to do like i was always sitting a corner as sir told i was a stone that to, uh, coconuts have to be smashed but now i think i started to you know give me some space and i started others to sculpture me i gave my life in front of others i asked their op- opinions about what i should do so everyone told like for me i am very i am very good at like you know bargaining things that and also they would have like you have to go for sales because you are good at sales that time and all i was like no no this is my i am settled but i think all those things that others say that also mattered in my life and now i am here i am very excited for the next two years i don't know what i'm going to do the next two years but i must say masters is not as easy as ug we have a lot of responsibilities no teachers will come pamper us learning that this we have to learn everything ourselves so i hope that everyone is as excited as me we all might be anxious we all might be excited that is something that we all have we are human beings we have feelings but what we are going to do with our next two years of life that is what is important so like let's jump out of our comfort zone go to new exposures learn from the mistakes make new friends and make everything possible like make your two years possible and fruitful and so i wish all the very best to all my fellow mates and batch mates and i thank you for giving me this opportunity thank you next up we have mr nishan philip Good morning, everyone. My name is Nishan Philip. So, I, I am here. Uh, I belong from Bihar, uh, and my city is Betia. So, as I want to build my career in management, so I believe, I believed that MBA from Saint Joseph Institute of Management will give me a chance to build up my skill and hone up my uh, career and hone up my tools, which will help. in the actual world of management and it will also give me a chance to uh, do whatever i like to do and in my career also so as uh, so apart from this 
the co-curricular activities which is offered by the college and so apart from management studies it will also help m me to build up the my interpersonal skills communication skills and public speaking so so we all so, so we all are here and uh, and uh, i hope we will have a great time here thank you next we have ms lavanya Uh, respected chief guest, director, dignitaries on and off the dais, teachers, parents, seniors, and my fellow batchmates, a very warm good morning to everyone present here. As I enter these much revered corridors of this great institution, I'm left spellbound by its beauty and heritage. And that heritage is something that I would like to embrace and contribute to as I spend the next two years honing my skills and being open to learning from the esteemed faculty of this great institution. I'm driven by the sense of wanting to pay it forward to this society and I always knew this institution will teach me to remain grounded and mindful of my privileges. Over the next two years, I hope to collaborate with like-minded peers who have a sense of purpose in paying it forward to society while also transforming themselves into a group of well-rounded citizens through the value-based education we are bound to receive here. I am motivated by a strong desire to run my own business in what I am good at, be it within fine arts, or contributing to social development and making this nation a better place one day at a time. I look forward to the next 24 months and consider it my privilege and honor to be chosen as a Josephite. And I would like to extend my gratitude to everyone who played a role in making it come true. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, dear juniors. Our Dean, Dr. A. R. Rajagopalan, is a constant source of inspiration and support for all students at SJIM. He's the lifeblood of SJIM, nurturing students and everyone with his calming nature and ever supporting behavior. I would now request our Dean, Dr. A. R. Rajagopalan, to kindly brief us about the proceedings of the orientation program. Good morning, everybody. Speaker was, the chief guest was asking if there is energy. Good morning. Good morning Thank you. Mr. Sanjay Kaul, I have to make a comment on what you spoke and what, I, what, we, what we listened a few minutes ago. It seems none of them want to be the granite stone and the coconut to be smashed on their heads. <laughs> That's what, you know, the first speaker was talking about. I don't think they want to be the granite stone itself. They want to be the idol that we all spoke about and you mentioned about. To this effect, you are here with some knowledge. It's not that you don't have anything, but you want to fine tune your knowledge. You want to get into the excellence that he spoke about. You want to be remembered as somebody that left a lasting impression. If these are going to be the hallmarks of every single of you gathered here, we need a particular framework. The framework starts with now and today so therefore i'm just going to request you to go to the notice board down below and check out which rooms you are going to be going into for the remainder part of the program just to give you an indication on the notice board you will find that sequence numbers 1 to 120 serial numbers 1 to 120 will be in xavier hall which is on the ground floor you will be there and uh, a facilitator will meet you there 121 to 160 serial numbers you will be in room number 113 on the first floor, 161 to 200, you will be on 114, again on the first floor, 201 onwards till the end, you will be in room number 102. So just after the tea break, the MC will announce the tea break for us. Once it is over, you please be gathered there, and then I'll be there in each of the rooms with you to handhold you throughout this particular week of orientation so that none of you are going to be the granite stones, just as granite stones, but as idols. Thank you so much. Good luck and welcome.
Thank you, sir. C. Joy Bell once said, ends are not bad things. They just mean that something else is about to begin. And there are many things that don't really end. They just begin again in a new way. As we come to the end of the inaugural program, I would like to call upon Mr. Anto Maria Lewis, our General Secretary from the second year PGDM to deliver the vote of thanks. No one who achieves success does so with the help of others. The wise and confident acknowledge this help with gratitude. A very warm welcome to one and all present here. It's my privilege to propose the vote of thanks for the day and acknowledge the contribution of all those who have really hard worked hard for this event to make a memorable one. On behalf of the student council, the college management, I would like to thank the almighty God for making today's event a grand success. I would like to thank our honorable chief guest, Mr. Sanjay Kaul, who spared his time and schedule to grace this occasion. Thank you, sir, for your time and your valuable thoughts. I would like to extend my gratitude to our beloved director, Reverend Dr. Manoj Disoza SJ, for enlightening us with his support and guidance. I thank our Dean, Dr. Raj Gopalan, for spreading his enthusiastic spirit among the students. A special thanks to Dr. Bini Cherian for organizing the event and all timely arrangements. And also, to I thank all the faculty members for all their prayers and support. I would like to thank the first year students, Ms. Ria Jose, Mr. Nishan Philip, and Ms. Lavanya for sharing your thoughtful insights. I would like to extend my gratitude to the student council members, the volunteers who have made their time in their internship period for supporting and involvement in uh, welcoming our juniors. I would like to thank the media team, Srinivas, Jonathan, and Devesh for their support. The choir team, Abhishek, Altia, Benji, and Jonathan for their wonderful performance. A special thanks to Saranya for the MC for today. I would like to extend my gratitude to the non-teaching staff, the backbone of SJIM, for their tireless effort. Last but not the least, a special thanks to my fellow juniors, the students of SJIM Batch 2023-25, for making it today. Choosing the right path is never easy. It's a decision we make in only our hearts to guide us, and I'm sure that you all have made your right choice. This place has changed many people and their life, and I hope it will change yours too. Remember, you all are here for a cause, so find it, explore it, and experience it. I once again welcome all the juniors. Thank you, and have a nice day. Thank you, Anto. And finally, thank you to our chief guest, our director, our dean, our teaching staff, non-teaching staff, and my dear fellow juniors, all the very best for your upcoming academic year. Signing off as your MC for the day. Looking forward to see you all next time. Thank you. Requesting everyone to rise as the dignitaries leave. Thank you all. Uh, students, there will be a refreshment ser uh, served outside the Loyola Hall. Once, you can, once the refreshments are done, your names will be put out on the uh, notice board, wherein following your roll numbers, you can just check. And our dean announced the respective classes, right? So you all can go to those classes once the refreshments are done. And the notice board is on the reception, near the reception, actually. Thank you. Thank you.